I think that one of the more subtle lessons in One Piece comes to us courtesy of our crew archeologist, which is very simply that in life, you need to find a partner who looks at you the same way that Robin looks at the subscribe button for the Grand Line review. The pressing of which will grant her regular One Piece content delivered straight into her YouTube feed. So yeah, no wonder she's making the eyes. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line review, your source for everything One Piece and more specifically, welcome to another One Piece battle where we take two characters from this vast series and pit them together in a hypothetical match and do our best to determine a win as objectively as possible by examining and awarding points for the following criteria. Power, speed, durability, haki, individual fighting styles, devil fruits, intelligence, and other miscellaneous notes. And today we have another straw hat centric battle. First up featuring our phenomenal navigator Nami, who has been a mainstay in the series ever since the mere days of chapter eight and is arguably the most valuable straw hat, having seen the crew through the dangers of the Grand Line and apocalyptic weather conditions of the new world. So of course, knowledge of weather is Nami's specialty, which can be seen in various incarnations of her climb attacked weapon. And for this fight, we will be assuming that Nami is equipped with her latest version of it, which is the second model of the Sorcery Climb Attack, which has the added bonus knowledge of Usopp's Pop Greens, as well as Frankie's mechanical genius, making this something of a super weapon. But going up against Nami is our magnificent archeologist, Nico Robin, a one-time femme fatale and now full-time powerhouse member of the Straw Hat Pirates, who possesses what I would call one of the most versatile devil fruits in existence, with an incredibly sharp mind and a grand sense of maturity and understanding of the world, having been thrust into its seedy underbelly since the tender age of eight years old. So how are these two going to match up? Well, let's see, because with that out of the way, let us commence the battle. And starting this time around, I want to first of all focus on speed because neither of these combatants are particularly well known for a close up rolling style of combat. And as such, speed and agility become a much more important factor. And as I just stated with Robin, she has quite literally been on the run from the world government for the large majority of her life, which has made her incredibly adept in the art of running. But at the same time, Nami has a very similar history. Having adopted the profession of thief at the age of 10, and having been sneaky and swift enough to amass a fortune of 100 million berries. So to be honest, I think it's very safe to say that both Nami and Robin are pretty much capable of peak human speed, so we do need to look a bit deeper. And one thing that gives me a bit of pause for thought are actually words coming from our former Marine Admiral Kuzan, who quite blatantly stated that a free time skip Robin could have escaped CP9 if she had so desired. However, she complied with them for the sake of the straw hats. Now, given that CP9 possesses superhuman speed techniques such as Soru, this is a big feather in Robin's cap. However, admittedly, Kuzan may not be referring to speed alone, but more so an overall account of Robin's abilities. So what we do need to do is look at some hard facts. And in this case, that turns out to be an SBS segment where Oda revealed what would happen if all of the Straw Hats ran a 50 meter race. And the results of that race were that Nami came in at seventh place and Robin closely behind her in eighth. So look, it is quite tricky, but with that one in mind, I must award the speed category to our cat burglar. Next up, we're going to move to power. And initially, when we're talking about this in terms of pure physicality, Robin would seem fairly unstoppable, especially a post time skip Robin, who is capable of creating gigantic limb structures and being able to strike an opponent with power comparable to that of a small giant. Now there is of course a great caveat with this in that those limbs have very limited range. However, Robin can spawn them almost anywhere she wants to. So the strength argument still stands. On the other hand, in terms of physicality, Nami is one of the weakest members of the crew. I mean, arguably Usopp is weaker, but that's only because Oda has stated that he always wants Usopp to be the weakest. And yes, there is a logical argument to be made that Nami is indeed weaker, but that's kind of irrelevant for this battle. However, that isn't to say that Nami has no power at all. In fact, it's very much the opposite. This might be a somewhat controversial thing to say, but I believe that Nami has access to some of the greatest and most potent power of any of the Straw Hats. And in recent days after acquiring Zeus, Nami is capable of devastating lightning attacks, which are comparable to that of NL's use of the Goro Goro no Mi, one attack from which very notably took Robin completely out of action in the pre-time skip era. And yes, Nami's attacks do take some setup, but Robin has incredible restrictions on the use of her most potent strength as well. And when in doubt, I'm going to go with the power that was strong enough to leave one of the four emperors of the sea lying in a crater, even if it was just briefly. So that is another tick for Nami with the power category. Looking at Devil Fruits now, and yeah, I guess this is a pretty obvious win for Robin, largely due to the fact that Nami does not have a Devil Fruit ability. But not only that, Robin actually happens to possess one of the craziest powers in the entire series, in my opinion, that has led her to perform the greatest array of feats that I think we've seen displayed from any fruit user, perhaps with the exception of Luffy. And you know what, maybe even Chopper. But the Hana Hana no Mi gives Robin everything. She can spawn limbs everywhere that isn't sea stone, even directly on her opponents. And if she can't see her opponents, then she can spawn extra sets of eyes everywhere and scout for them. Furthermore, in the post time skip era, Robin can also make herself a pair of hand wings, giving her exceptional maneuverability, as well as create entire clones of herself. But we'll get to how Robin's Devil Fruit specifically interacts with Nami within future categories. But for now, Robin obviously wins the Devil Fruit category by default. Moving on to durability, and here we have another close one because neither Nami nor 
Eleanor or Robin are particularly well known for tanking damage. In fact, they are both much better known for having minor amounts of damage take them out of action entirely. However, that isn't to say that they don't possess impressive levels of durability, especially compared to that of the average human, but it is more so the result of willpower than physicality, which, hey, is just as valid. With Nami, there are two situations that I always fall back to, one of which was during the Alabaster arc, where she stopped Miss Doublefinger's charge by smashing her foot onto one of the enemy spikes, which still makes me wince in pain to see or even think about today. In addition to that, Nami also took a she-gun from Califa during the enemy Slobby arc, which is effectively like being hit with a bullet, so this navigator is not to be taken lightly. As for Robin though, I feel like she has just demonstrated durability on a far higher level. Very notably during the Skypea arc in her first and sadly currently only one-on-one -on -one fight in the series against Yama, where she took direct attacks from him. And let's be clear, Yama is quite the powerhouse actually. His physical ability shattered rocks and ruins like they were already the dust that they would go on to become. So Robin being able to take hits like this is absolutely huge. Furthermore, in the post time skip realm, Robin has also had a very impressive showing during the Diamante fight where her back was obliterated by the enemy Stardust technique. And look, as much as Nami does have very impressive willpower, I just don't see her being able to equal the durability feats of Robin. Having briefly brought up Skypea though, Nami did use an impact dial on one occasion to which she suffered some great damage, but still managed to recover. But nonetheless, with all of the available evidence, this category is still going to Robin. Also, let's briefly cover Haki, if only to say that neither combatant here has access to any form of Haki that we know of. So instead of calling this category a tie as we would usually do with no clear winner, I am going to nullify it completely. But I do want to still bring it up though, because a tiny bit of Haki here or there would boost Nami or Robin significantly, and in fact, especially Robin. I mean, just imagine if Robin were capable of armament Haki and able to coat her gigantic spawned limbs in it. That sounds incredibly deadly, and quite similarly, Nami would benefit incredibly from accessing observation Haki, because it would only perfect her environmental awareness. Sadly though, neither of these straw hats have access to Haki at this point in time, but I suppose there is always hope. Intelligence is our next category, and this is arguably where both Nami and Robin excel. They are easily the smartest members of the Straw Hats, perhaps maybe with the exception of Jinbei, very maybe. But regardless, this is very much incorporated into their individual fighting styles, which we have yet to examine. But in every example of a fight we do have involving either Nami or Robin, their sheer tactical prowess becomes a crowning feature of the engagement. Whether that's Nami creating illusions to full Califa, or Robin strategically placing her body parts to gain the advantage over opponents who are exceptionally stronger than her, both of them are phenomenally intelligent combatants. Although Nami and Robin do possess very different brands of intelligence though, and it leads them to producing very unique tactics. And my conclusion is that I don't think either one would have a strict advantage over the other when it comes down to thinking. So this category is going to be very swiftly declared a tie. As we move on to individual fighting styles, which is where we will examine how all of the above comes together into a clash. And you might think that it's very difficult to deny Robin a win here because yes, Nami is technically faster and yes, Nami is significantly more powerful in theory. However, Robin's particular style is more than likely going to be able to overcome both of these features, especially because this fight could entirely possibly be over in an instant if Robin is able to sprout hands on Nami and incapacitate her. That is the great overpowered nature of the Hanahana no Mi against non-superhuman opponents. However, this dynamic is a bit of an interesting one because Nami, like Robin, is also not a close ranged combatant. And so she depends more on setting up traps with a clam attack, which could prove very, very effective against Robin if Nami is somehow able to remain hidden and not become vulnerable to the Hanahana no Mi, which is not impossible by any means because Nami is an experienced thief and fantastic at hiding. And furthermore, as I stated before, Nami can even create mirages to misdirect Robin. Although just as Robin could create clones to misdirect Nami, this really would be such a fascinating fight to see play out. But I do think it's impossible to predict how these two differing styles would ultimately interact. One is not necessarily superior to the other. And it's one of those situations where it is completely down to who implements a better strategy. This could be an instant win for Robin, but it could also be a very easy win for Nami. And as such, this is another tie category. With miscellaneous features, I would very much like to note that Robin presents a grand weakness in sprouting her limbs, which is that she very much feels the effect of any damage inflicted on said limbs. And over an extended period of time, this is going to heavily spiral out of control and become a potentially huge detriment for Robin, who can only take so much pain, and Nami is quite capable of inflicting a hell of a lot of pain. However, Nami also has a glaring weakness in that should she be disarmed or should any huge damage be inflicted upon the climb attack itself, then she has zero fighting capabilities left. Her entire combative career is based on this weapon, and there would be no option but to surrender without it, whilst Robin can lose as many generated limbs as she is willing to accept the damage from. But in conclusion, it looks like we have our very first tie in One Piece battle history. Not that this series has been running for a particularly long time. However, both combatants have a total of four points, with Nami succeeding in speed and power, whilst Robin excels in devil fruit and durability, with both of them proving amazing 
in intelligence and individual fighting style, and with neither of them able to even compete for the hockey category, resulting in both of them being disqualified from it. And some people might feel that after going through all of that, hey, a tie is a bit of cop out, but I think that this has been a pretty invaluable examination. I honestly went into this thinking that Robin was going to completely wreck Nami, and my research went on to shock me so much that a Nami versus Robin fight is, hypothetically, one of the battles that I would want to see most of any of the fights we've covered thus far in the series. So maybe we can have a rematch down the road, but it really is anyone's game this time around, and I would like to offer my congratulations to both Nami and Robin for putting on a superb showing for us here today. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Crown Line Review and I'll see you next time.